Hey everybody, miss me? Yeah, it's been a while. I've been so freaking YouTube lazy. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, and I've also been sick, like really sick, but not the Rona. I actually had the flu. You could still get that. Yeah, so anyway, <clears throat> just like the title said, 2022 Hubble Pallet Processing. I have really done some reassessment in my processing and uh, I wasn't really happy with it. But I think that's, that's how you grow, right? You look at it, you're satisfied. You should always be happy with your progress, but not are satisfied. Uh, so I really looked at my images and they started looking more like paintings when I would process them instead of photographs. And I'm like, you know, I could go out and I could take a pretty picture of the sunset and that's a photograph. But I take a picture of space and it looks like art or cartoony or something. So uh, I really just stripped it all down, dove back in and tried to figure out a way to uh, preserve some of the finer details, not blow things out, mitigate some saturation. And I've come up with a really cool process that I want to share with you today. Uh, this is going to be a two part video. Uh, first part is starting in PixInsight, moving over to Photoshop and then back in PixInsight. Uh, and then the second part follow-up video will be staying in PixInsight and trying to replicate and seeing how I can match the two images uh, using the combination of programs. So as always, behind me is a computer. It's running. PixInsight's up. So let's get into this. Look at that screenshot. That's a little bit of the Pleiades right there, like a couple hours the other night. Pretty bitchin', huh? Uh, yeah, so let's open up PixInsight. And we've got some uh, monkey head nebula data. That's what we're gonna be processing today in the new 2022 way. <laughs> uh, so this is our sulfur data, looks pretty good. And our HA data, pretty awesome. And we've got some good O3 data too. That's why I chose that, because all three data sets are pretty strong. Um, this works for anything. Uh, so obviously we've got some cropping issues that we need to address here. <clears throat> so let's do that first. Um, let's just make sure sometimes I have this really bad habit of stacking them individually. And yes, they are aligned. I go through all these processing steps and they're not even aligned. Anyway, um, let's get that sulfur back up here and let's crop it. So we're going to go ahead and process geometry, dynamic crop. Um, I'm not going to, I could hit that button here and it's going to draw a box around the whole thing, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw a box. Uh, really just want to isolate smaller the image the faster the processes go here in youtube land so right about there let's drag that instance off drop it right down here let's close dynamic crop Turn it on. and let's drag and drop cropped image that's two drop it on the ha cool and let's drop it just dropping that thing right on it, drag and drop, and they are cropped. Um, let's do a little, let's go here to process, all process. Let's go to fast rotation. And let's rotate counterclockwise. Let's process it like that if you want to. Something different. Sure. That's two. Drag and drop. HA, drag and drop. So you see we got a little gradients on the HA. So we're gonna use it first. This is our pre-combination processing. Uh, we're gonna use it as our template for process background, dynamic background extraction. I'll try to even this background up. Let's click on the image so they link the tools. And we're gonna adjust that tolerance to 1.5. I'm going to boost that smoothing factor up to 6.5. Come down here in sample generation. Do the drop down box. We don't need that many samples. So let's push that down to be 5. Let's leave the um, 
radius at 24. We're going to bring that minimum sample weight down to 4.5. That's just going to make sure that everybody's happy. So my samples look fairly small. Probably make them just a little bit bigger. Boost those up to 30. Say resize all. That's good. Now we can see them. So the ones we can see, let's just kind of push them off into here. These right here, let's go ahead and delete those. Oops, we don't want to add one. We're going to delete it. Uh, this one here, we're going to delete. Just want these to go around. We can pull that one off the nebula. We don't want any of these little sample points on the nebula. I keep adding them. And something really cool you can do, let's zoom in here and make sure we don't have any on the nebulosity. Nope. I think we did good. What else you can do is let's go to the upper uh, left hand corner, click on that one. It gives you a preview. And you can fast forward or skip to the next one. And if you're skipping along, whoop, see right there, you got a star. So which one's green? Oh, he's right here. Find the green one. So that's an easy way, because I used to like zoom in and scroll around. Like you don't see my hands. Zoom in and scroll around. Um, that's a fast way to really figure out which one's on a star. Because you really don't want, when they're small like this, you don't want them on a star. Okay. So I went through them all. Uh, let's go over here to target correction. Drop down is division. We're going to discard the background model because we really don't care to see it. Hit the check mark. All right. So let's hit the STF nuclear button here. Ooh, 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 ooh look at that. Man, that's clean. Clean, clean, clean. I love it. All right, so minimize it. Actually, to maximize it here, Double click on the tab. Let's just change that to HA. Get rid of that big old long name. Push it up here. Now let's drag that instance off. It's all of our uh, sample points. Saved. Close the tool. Let's close the old image. Let's open up S2. Double click on the instance here. Brings up the tool. Puts all your points exactly where you had them on the HA. Cool. Let's hit the uh, check mark. See what it does. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Let's rename it. Double click on the tab. S2. Hopefully you don't hear my keyboard as much. I've moved my microphone base. I'd watch my videos before and it'd be like... Yeah. Just like that. All right, so double click on the instance again. We'll set all the sample points. All right. Check mark. STF. Awesome sauce. That one, Steve. It's the last one. Get it right, dude. Okay, 03. Very cool. Now, we're going to put them together. We're going to actually blend them together right off the bat here. So open up channel combination. So uh, let's reset the tool. Double palette, HA in the green. Uh, blue is uh, 03. And S2 is red. Hit the uh, apply global button. That's going to give us an image. Let's bring it up here and stretch it. Yeah. Now our Screen transfer function is going to show us a display. It's not actually stretching an image. It's just displaying the uh, image uh, stretched. If we leave this linked right here, you're going to see it's fairly green. If we uncheck that and hit it again, Pix Insight makes some minor adjustments to show you kind of what you're going to be seeing here. So, uh, yeah, right off the bat, it's a pretty darn good looking image. There's some magenta in there, but I'm not worried about it. So what we're going to do, we're going to treat this like um, um, RGB data. We're going to set a background sample with this uh, little blank box here. If you hover over, it says new preview mode. So I just drew a box here in the background. Try not to get any stars. Come here to process. Uh, 
color combination, background neutralization. I'm going to hit this little box here. It's going to bring up a drop down list, and I'm going to find that preview, which is right here. Okay. And drag and drop. And that's going to start to even out the background. If you hit F12, that'll kill the auto stretch. And then you can hit the little nuclear button. A little cleaner. I can tell. Can you tell? Still got some magenta, but that's fine. Um, we're going to come back in here to process. Color, color calibration. Color calibration. We're going to use the image as the white reference, so we're not going to select any boxes here. We're going to turn off structure detection, and then we're going to go grab that background preview that we created. Drag and drop. I find this actually gives me, you see, it gives me a little bit better color representation. We're going to kill the auto stretch and restretch it again. It's not going to be that uh, magenta y, but it does give me a little better color representation. I think that's a term. Uh, cool. So let's go in here to preview and delete all. So now let's do a uh, linear, because we're still in a linear state, let's do a linear background noise reduction on this thing here. We're going to kill the auto stretch. What? Yes. We're going to open up multi-scale linear transform right down here these are my settings that's why i save these tools because if they have these parameter settings they're always here for me so these are the settings you're more than welcome to copy and we're going to come down here and check linear mask Hit the drop down list we're going to check preview mask and then we're going to hit this little circle right here that's going to give us a real-time preview and because we have it it's like black. So let's amplify. You can start to see the uh, monkey head showing up here. Let's do a little bit more. Yeah, it's really pushing. All right, so the areas in black will not receive any noise reduction. Let's max that out. There we go. And then we can smooth the mask out just a little bit. Groovy. I like it. So let's close the uh, preview. We're going to uncheck preview mask. We're going to hit the STF to see the image. And then we're going to drag that instance over. First step is <clears throat> kill the preview. We want to stretch this thing. And here's where I'm really starting to deviate. Here's where we go into a different territory. We're going to reset the tool. We're going to hit the circle button here to create a real time preview. And we're going to Hit that little check mark there so we can see our histogram. It's all pushed over to the left here. I want to apply a very mild stretch. And what I'm looking for here are stars. I'm not I'm not real concerned with the nebulosity right now. What I'm looking for is how bright are my stars? At what point do I want to stop stretching my stars? Okay. And I think somewhere right there. That's about as big as I want my stars. My stars. Right there. Let's minimize the tool. And we see we got some of this magenta, so let's kill that off. Let's go over here to image. And we're gonna invert the image. And we're gonna come over here to SCNR. Set them out to 100%, drag it over, and what it's going to do is it's going to kill all that green. You saw that green? Because when you flip, flip that magenta, it turns green. So we've just pushed it back here in the inverted mode. And now if we take the image and go back to invert, there, gone. Nice and clean. So I really like my star size. Still a little color in them. They're not too uh, blown out. Yeah, I like it. Let's uh, let's go the wrong road. We're in this. Let's end it to win it, right? So let's push that down here. Let's open up our HA. Okay. Let's see if we can sharpen this HA luminance layer up just a little bit. Just to give us a little stronger detail. So we're going to do some deconvolution on it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make a copy. Just like that. Yep. And we're going to go down here to this K-band. We're going to 
point at the very end of it, we're going to roll our mouse wheel back. Grab this little carrot on the back side here, and we really just want to only expose the highlights. This is going to be our deconvolution mask. So open up our histogram transformation. Take that data, put it up on there. All right, kill the auto stretch, drag and drop that data onto the image. Set the tool, we're gonna minimize it. Awesome. So this is gonna be our decon mask. Um, let's come over here to star mask, open it up. These are my typical star mask settings. I am going to boost the truncation to 0.92. I have large scale set to zero, scale set to 11, noise threshold set to 3.1. I'm creating a star mask. And I, I'm not clicking aggregate or binarize just because I want a little softer mask. Uh, those two checked will create a very strong uh, star mask. Very abrupt. Let's just drag it onto the image and wait. Okay, we got a star mask. Let's minimize that. I like it. It did pretty good. Um, cool. So let's minimize it. We're going to minimize our decon mask. Now we need to create a PSF. That is a synthetic star based on the stars that we see here. We're going to cheat. We're going to come here to script. Uh, we're going to go down here to easy processing suite, easy decon. And we're going to come over here to deconvolution and click generate PSF. It's going to generate a PSF for us. There we go. So we close the tool, minimize it. So there's our three tools for our deconvolution. So this HA clone, this is our deconvolution mask. So we're going to drag the tab over, drop it on that tab, and that applies it as a mask. We're going to leave it that way, but we are going to click mask. Right, oh, how did I do that? I right clicked on the image, mask, and I'm going to say show mask. So the mask is still there because the tab is red. So let's draw our draw up here in our preview mode. Let's get it just about this part of the image right here. And let's do another preview right there. It's going to be our two previews. <clears throat> uh, let's open up our deconvolution tool. Let's reset it. So right now we want to use an external PSF. We're going to go top to bottom. We're going to find it and where is it at? PSF. Select it. Click OK. So there's our PSF. Uh, wavelet regular localization. <laughs> We're going to boost it up to three layers and I want to boost my noise threshold on that one. Uh, more on the lower layer levels, layers, layer levels. Shit. All right. Minimize that. Next thing is de-ringing, so we are going to turn that on. We're going to push our global dark down to 0.1, hit local, de-ringing, and that's where we're going to go find that star mask, which is right here. Hello, star mask. <clears throat> All right, so let's go into uh, preview two. Oh, I like preview two. I like this. Always like this little. It's like his lip. Anyway, it's the monkey lip. Uh, okay, so. Let's change our iterations to 20 and let's drag and drop the preview or the instance on and see what it does. All right. So our control shift and Z key. Ooh, man, it shrank some, it shrunk. Some stars got shrunk. So you can see we're starting to get a little, um, just a tiny little bit of right, right here, especially watch this. See that little donut. Uh, let's fix this with pushing our global dark up. Let's do it point two. And drag and drop. Uh, control shift and Z. See how they fix that? We're still shrunken up the stars. Boosting some of these details in the uh, the nebula itself. Let's go over here to preview one. Let's drag that on there. See this it's really tightened some of these stars up. I think it might be just a skosh too aggressive on some of those stars. A skosh. Let's back it down to uh, 15 and let's run it. So that means we got to click back out of it, 
click to the main image, drag the instance over. It's going to be worth it. Trust me. All right, so we're done with our deconvolution. Let's go here to preview, drop down here and delete all. Right click on the image, go down here and mask and say, remove the mask. All right. Uh, so now let's come over here to back to script, easy suite. This is the tool I love. I love it. And we're just going to run easy denoise. TGVC, TGVD settings are all basically default. Yes, everything is default. All I do is import the image and click run easy denoise. And it's going to be, does that mean smooth? Anybody knows sign language? What's smooth? Because I really want to know what that is. All right. Pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. Digging it. Okay. Uh, so same thing. We are going to kill the auto stretch on this one. It's going to be our luminous layer. And what I'm finding, you know, if you've seen, watch me before, I've like fully stretched the color data, then fully stretched and processed the luminous layer, then applied it, and then had to do a whole bunch of work to try to salvage it because it looked really um, uh, dull. <laughs> All right, so let's open up the uh, histogram transformation with the real time preview. And same thing that we did with the color data. We're going to do a mild stretch, we're going to watch our stars. We don't want to reset it. Duh. Mild stretch. Hit the square to accept it. Reset the tool. Watching those stars. I want to keep them pretty small. The whole object is to try not to blow out the stars. Because we're going to pull them out of the image here in a little bit. Right about there. I like it. Let's reset the tool. Minimize it. Close the real-time preview, and let's minimize that uh, limits layer. Open up our color data. Okay. And we are going to come in here to LRGB combination, minimize the tool, drag our mildly stretched HA data over to the luminance, turn off the RGB. We're going to boost the saturation a little bit, lowering it, boost it, raising it, is that counter? Uh, never mind. I've been through that before. Uh, we are going to select chrominance noise reduction and we're going to apply the luminance layer that we just created over the top. All right. So you see it, it kind of muted some of our colors, but that's okay. We're going to get them right back. But I like how it was applied in this. I mean, if you look at this image here, yes, our background's really dark. There's some faint nebulosity that we're not seeing, but this is what I'm looking for. You know, I'm looking for these really crispy details that can easily be blown out. Um, that's what I'm looking for. So, <clears throat> next step. We're going to come over here to process, count down object recognition, and we're going to start exterminator. And you can check out some previous videos on how to get this installed. I highly recommend it because this is how we do the process. We're going to select generate star image, and I have found that star exterminator and probably start at in the new one. Uh, I found that it works much better in this state when I have, um, what is it I'm trying to say? When I haven't stretched it very much, uh, it really pulls the stars out better. I think I should probably have the tool working while I talk. All right, we're done. Let's minimize the tool. Boop. You gotta make that sound when you put stuff back. Boop our stars we're gonna push those down here so dig it that is bad okay it is really except for a little halo here which we're gonna clean up um that is a crazy looking image okay uh so next step is what we want to do is try to get a little bit more of this fainter uh, nebulosity to show up here still within pixel sight and the other thing I want to do is kill off some of this green. So I'm going to open up SCNR. I'm going to push that down to maybe 73% uh, mitigation. I can drop it over. There we go. And we're going to open up our curve transformation. And then here's where we get a little semi uh, technical, I guess, is we're going to create a real time preview. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use our cursor. We're going to click down here. 
it's going to start displaying our levels along this linear line of our uh, curves transformation here. And it's telling us that those are our brightness levels. Obviously they're not pegged all the way against the left hand side, or right about there. So we can roll our mouse wheel back maybe one spot to a times two. Let's click it so it's a little easier to work. So right about there, so let's grab it, pull it down, and come right ahead of it, just right ahead, and lift up. Subtly. Right there. <coughs> let's accept it. Do a couple iterations of that. The other thing we can do is click our saturation tool, come down here in the lower limits of it, push up slightly, and this C component here is almost like adding vibrance to your colors. We're starting to transform this image, We're starting to bring back some of those colors. All right? Look at that. Uh, same thing again, RGBK. Find out where our black point is. Put here. Uh, pull it down just a little bit, and then come right ahead, right in front of it. Push it up right there. And you can actually maybe just come just a little bit ahead of it. See, we're already kind of starting to get a little too bright. Right about there. <laughs> I think that's probably about as bright as I want. But what I'm doing is, uh, is I'm not pixelating the color data. And I've noticed if you really stretch this thing, it's almost like you're starting to rip apart uh, your image. And I'm trying to preserve that. And are, are my images just a little bit darker now? Yeah. But trust me, I would rather have that than what I have been putting out. So another little saturation bump. Another little uh, C component vibrance bump. And good, good. Really got some color to it. We didn't do much, did we? Just subtle changes. Okay, so let's go over here to File, Save As. Uh, we're gonna save it as a TIFF. We just call it image 12, click Save. 16 bit <clears throat> click save so now let's move over to photoshop photoshop this girl's paneling away it's probably some orca some killer whale stalking her right now she doesn't even know it cool so first thing i want to do is i want to create a copy so drag and drop it down on the plus sign here i'm going to go into um filter camera raw filter basic tab I'm gonna boost the virus a little bit more gonna dehaze it just a little bit and then I'm gonna say clarity what clarity is gonna do is it's gonna kind of drop the low tones down and kind of brighten the image a little bit didn't do much look okay didn't have to do much pretty clean image okay that's all I did I mean look at this in here man let's merge that down so let's accentuate some of these uh, structures in here. So let's make another copy. And we're going to go in here to filter, other, high pass. Um, let's adjust the slider until we start to see our details. Pop up, cool. Click OK to that. We're going to change the blending mode to overlay. It makes it look a little crunchy. This little uh, square down here with a circle in the middle of it that creates a layer mask. Let's point at the layer mask and hit Control I and inverts it. And with our paintbrush selected, I've got an opacity of 64% and a flow of 84%. I'm going to come in here and just highlight some of these details. Let's paint them in. I like doing this. I don't know about you guys. I find I, I can really have some control. Pixel Side's going to do this, and like I said, part two, we're going to see how it does this, but it does it, to me, it's global. It's like you can't say, I want that, not that, you know? So that's why I like coming over here to Photoshop still. <laughs> Get the 
Let's see, on and off. Right there, Ooh, let's get that, yeah. Cool. Let's uh, right click on our layer mask, hit select mask, and then we're gonna feather what we painted. And right click on it and say merge down. Cool. So let's make another copy. And we still got some green in here. I'm not quite digging the color. Uh, so what we can do is come in here to select color range or set the sample color. So let's grab that right there. And we're gonna push the fuzziness down until we're really just isolating this area here. Click okay to that. So we've got our little marching ants. Let's go in here to select, select a mask. Let's feather that selection. Right about there. Cool. And hit Control J. We're gonna push that up on the top. <clears throat> And then we're going to come down here to image adjustments and select color and we're going to choose our neutrals and we pull our cyan back see how that kind of takes some of that green out we can actually boost our magenta Ooh, boost the yellow just a little bit pushing the blacks back will make it a little brighter just go minus one on that. See that? We just kind of took a little bit of that green out. Awesome. We could duplicate that and change its blending mode to uh, color dodge. And that's like shabam! You see that, man? So now let's drop that opacity and let it down. Let's push it back up. about there. Not much. Cool. Burns that down. And burns that down. I like it. I don't, I don't think I'm going to blue up the blue any. I think I'm happy with this. Uh, so let's merge that down and then we're going to create one more copy. We're going to do one more step and this is awesome. This is an awesome step. Um, let's see if we can heal that little star right there. I know, right? Blasphemy! Boop. Right there. Smooth that out. Okay. Don't tell your friends. I did that. Alright, so what's the next step? We're going to come back in here. We've got two layers. They're identical, essentially. Wait, are they identical? No, because we fixed that one. Let's merge it down. Create another copy. Shh. <laughs> okay. Let's go over here to filter, camera off filter. Um, go to the detail tab. We're going to boost our noise reduction. Ooh, we're going to get a smooth image. Look at that. That's like crazy smooth, right? Click OK to that. Cool. But we, we lost those finer details that we just created. Not to fear. They're right here. All right, create a layer mask, uh, select the image below it, control A to select all, or control C to copy. We're going to point at this white layer mask and hold the alt key down and click on it and that puts us inside. We're inside. Oh, I'm in the matrix. Uh, control V will paste it and control I will invert it. So just like before we were doing the other layer mask in the multi-scale linear transform, same premise. What's black will be protected. What's white will receive the noise reduction. So we're going to come to image adjustment levels. So everything's been inverted, obviously. So we're going to push this black point over. It's going to start darkening up our all that work that we did. Bring this white point in. I like that right there. Let's click OK to that. <coughs> Merge down. Uh, select and deselect. Oh, um, I don't even tell you. If you don't like that, it's off. All right. Uh, so let's go here to file and save. We're going to save it and leave it alone. Let's minimize it. And we're 
back at Pixel Site. Sorry, minimized uh, Photoshop. These are our image 12 stars. All right, we're going to create a copy. Double click on the tab. We're going to call this Big Old Stars. You don't have to put the old. So we're going to stretch this star layer just a little bit to increase our star size. So open up our histogram transformation, create a, get the circle here to create a preview. And then we're just going to pull that point over. You see our stars are getting bigger. Yeah, right there. <clears throat> this is a little star trick that I've come up with um, for really giving the image depth. I'll explain that to you before, but I'll explain it here in a second. So let's go ahead and save it. File, save as, big stars. We're going to save it as a 16-bit TIFF. And we'll go over here to our regular stars. File, save as, no regular stars, save, 16-bit TIFF, take us some orange juice, because uh, we need our vitamin C, all right, minimize fix and sight, <coughs> clear our throat, crack our neck, oh, back up, cool, we're going to create a copy, on the top, on the bottom, Come over here to file, open, and grab, hold the control button down so we can get them both, and we're going to open up those two star images. So big stars, let's uh, hit control A, control C, let's go over here to our image, and control V, and paste it, and then we want it in the middle. So we want an image, one of our uh, SHO images on top, this is big stars here. Let's select it, and then we are going to change the blending mode to screen. Hey, my nose. Okay, so let's select our small stars, Control A, Control C, and Control V to paste. <clears throat> now watch this. When I can, when I change the blending mode to screen, boom. So my stars are back in it, but they're not obnoxious, right? They're they're toned down and even some of the background stars have really started to kind of fade away into the distance we're creating depth uh, so the next thing we can do is come in here to filter or select it on the small star layer filter noise dust and scratches um, we can push that radius up to maybe three you can see it in your preview here you can see what it's doing and those dimmer stars that almost have this the same brightness value that almost make everything look flat are starting to dim out right so let's maybe set that to like a four so let's preview see the preview to what it's doing it's pushing those dimmer stars back Look okay to that and then we're going to select our uh, SHO layer here image adjustment because we put that star layer over and we screened it it could almost look like we dulled it out just a little bit so let's just pull it down just a little bit raise it up Whew, man that's sick i just got stare at it okay <clears throat> so let's come back up here to our dimmer stars and hit merge down now so with this big star layer set to screen, we're gonna come back up here and make sure we clicked on the top copy. We've got our erasure tool clicked. We're at 100% opacity and flow. We use our brackets here to click on the star and then see how it just kind of turns them back on. So we can come up here and just boop, grab that star right there. Kind of get over the star in the spikes just really deal with just the stars so we're just selectively turning these brighter stars kind of back on and revealing that stretched star layer that we had below so I'm not going to bore you with clicking on stars but here we've got 
the background stars are really dimmed out. We've got our foreground stars really pronounced. We've got a really smooth, awesome looking image. Uh, it's not oversaturated, but you know, that's kind of the name of the game right now is I'm really, I'm pulling back. I'm, I'm applying a less is more philosophy to this. There are some, some highlights here that I think we could probably stretch a little bit. So let's go over here to image, uh, actually layer and let's flatten the image. Let's create a background. <coughs> All right. Uh, so let's go here to where are we going to go? Oh, our little teardrop, right click on it, color sample tool. Let's check our levels. See, we're pretty dark. We're at 14. We, we could be like in high 24 right here, but at least we're nice and even. So let's go image adjustment levels. We've got it set to RGB and let's take this midtone to kind of push it up. Let's see if we can't get it to kind of a 19 range there. I like that. Let's uh, grab our blue here and just push it up just a little bit more. A little heavy on the blue. Cool. We could probably adjust the opacity of that right now. Like 85%. All right, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's go over here to file and we're gonna go to uh, save or save the image. And it looks great, but it needs some sharpening. And I like to sharpen it back in Pixinsight. So let's minimize these two. <clears throat> Let's go over here to file, open, image 12. And because we already have an image 12, it's going to add a 1 to it. So now it looks like image 121. That's fine. Let's expand it. It's a great looking image. I'm digging it. Okay, let's, uh, this little guy right here says extract CIL component. We're going to click it. And that's going to pull out basically the luminance. Very cool. I'm just going to reapply it. Right like that. Pop. You got to make that noise too. Pop. Uh, okay. Right click on the image and say mask and show mask. Cool. So let's click our preview tool and let's grab kind of this area right here. So we want to see how we're going to sharpen the nebulosity as well as the star. So we're getting like a good mix in that general location. So how are we going to sharpen? We're going to use multi-scale linear transform. What? What that was for noise reduction? Uh -huh. Not quite. So let's reset the tool. We're going to come here to layer two, click on it, come in here to our bias tab, and we're going to set that to 0.5. Come. What did I do? I did something wrong. We're going to set that to 0.05. Uh, we're going to set this to 0 0.075, we're increasingly getting more, and then we're going to set the top layer here, or this fourth layer, to 0.1. <clears throat> so we're zoomed in at this, let's drag and drop and see what it does. It tends not to crunch things up as much, so before or after. The stars are sharpened up. You know, they've got a little more definition in them. You can definitely see some of the uh, darker filaments here tightening up some. I like it. So now we're gonna drag and drop on the whole image. <coughs> Crazy. All right, and you're like, seriously, Steve, was all that worth it? Uh, remove mask, so we're done. File, open, and watch this. We're gonna go to, this is what I posted about a year ago. Bah! Right? Uh, process, all processes, fast rotation. There you go. So here's the difference. Can you see the difference? 
do you agree that it's worth it? Not. If you're like, that's awesome, rock on. There's nothing wrong with that. But to me, I just like the way this looks better. Yeah, I think there's some nebulosity that may be hard to see if you post that on Instagram or something. There's some faint stuff in here that I've probably lifted a bit more. Um, but I think as far as a quality image, I like this a lot better. I like this new approach and I've applied it to several other images and equally blown away. So, you know, there's nothing better than learning something new and then running back and reprocessing, reprocessing everything that you've already processed before. Uh, and that's what I'm doing now. But yeah, this is the, um, the new and improved for me, Hubble palette process. Yeah. Love it. I could probably do, uh, let's do this real quick. Let's go to script utilities and we're going to do dark structure enhancement. Watch this. Push it down. 0.32. Look okay. Especially the stars. You know, that depth and stars that I've created here uh, really pushes forward the nebula or the principal nebula or what it is you're really involved in really pushes back those stars uh, so yeah before and after oh just a little bit right I like it cool okay we're done that's it so if you are a pixel site and Photoshop user I hope you're able to follow along some of these uh, processes take a little bit so uh, so obviously I've skipped ahead and stay tuned for the second part of this video where Let's stay right here in Pixon Site and let's try to replicate this the best we can. Uh, so until I get that video out, clear skies, clear minds, and sharp stars. All right? All right. Peace out.